There are significant changes ahead for the way grains research and development is managed here in Australia. GRDC, together with CSIRO, State Departments of Agriculture and Universities, have been looking at how they've been investing in research, development and extension and asking could they do it better. As a result, a national strategy has been developed and it will mean change. GRDC's Managing Director, Peter Redding, outlined how things will differ. The major differences is in this area we call major support link. That's where we've sat down and said, right, particularly right research, basic research, strategic research, we don't need to do that everywhere. That can be done somewhere nationally where the capability is and other states and other agencies will, will, will take that from them. So that's the centre, the, the establishment of national centres of capability. For example, CSRO, La Trobe in Victoria and the Waite Institute in Adelaide are three centres. And they're actually proposing two new ones, one in Queensland, one in Western Australia. So in terms of research, they'll be nationally run programs based on national objectives. The second key element is about actual programs. Uh, the grains industry, we already have a number of national programs, such as the Herbicide Resistance Initiative, Cereal Rust Control. But we've now initiated a number of new national programs. So these will be programs where we're all participating, whether it be a state agency, CSRO, universities. But they'll be nationally coordinated programs. So that's the second major change. The third one is very much on what we call the applied centres of excellence. And this is where we'll have our, our traditional research stations, our, our localised areas, and we're really looking at which ones should we concentrate on. We don't need to concentrate on all of them. Which ones will become major uh, facilities for grain, like a grain research and development hub. And very importantly, that will then work out how that links with local consultants, local farming systems and local grower groups to make sure we are focusing on the right research and development at those centres and then very critically we are getting it out. One of the things that will be assuming greater importance is grower groups. Tell me about that. Now the strengths of a grower group is that it's, they're addressing a local issue, it's local farmers looking at their local problem and in terms of adaption, adoption, the farmers are more happier looking at their neighbours doing it through a grower group. So that's, that's the real strength. The challenge is that we have many grower groups, some that are specialised uh, and purely on R&D, some have become much more community groups, some are well run, some aren't so well run. So it's really making sure that we have them focused. Uh, what's the actual research question we're trying to answer or the validation question? How's the program run in a way in terms of making sure it's well run from a technical point of view, in terms of trials, etc.? and critically evaluating how that's increased the rate of adoption versus a different delivery channel. So they're evolving like the rest of the grains industry is evolving. They will play a very important role going forward and it's obviously a part of the national RDE strategy as well as GRDC strategy to make sure those grower groups are focused, they're well run and they're really delivering a local output to their growers in their area. How will you end up doing that? It'll be a combination. Firstly, it's to make sure that what are we strategically trying to achieve in that, in that region? In other words, what's the local issue? Is it a herbicide issue, a nutrition issue, uh, a weed issue or whatever? And then it's saying, okay, what do, what do we need to do there? Is it purely just doing a couple of quick strip trials to evaluate something locally? What is it? So having a really focused program with that grower group, making sure we have something that's flexible, yet at the same time we make sure we have an outcome that can be extended. The second thing, which is something we're doing a lot of work on at the moment, is coordinating the efforts between the grower groups. For example, in West Australia, where there's a number of grower groups, we've actually worked very closely and we have a, a, a facilitator who coordinates all that work. So to make sure that there are common pro, uh, proposals, that they're measuring the things that we need to measure. So it's really engaging with them to define what part of the role do they play in the extension and make sure they've got the programs, they've got the capability to deliver them in a way that maximises the opportunity for practice change. Given the landscape that's coming, what should local producer groups be doing to make sure that they're linking in well with the way extension is going to happen? Well, the first thing is to make sure that the groups are actively understanding what the research and development issues are. A lot of them it's about local types of issues, a weed or something like that, and being able to link into those programs and be aware what the program's doing. What we're actually doing is obviously the members of the groups will be attending, but we're trying to encourage other people to come into them. Also to the groups to work together. One of the key things we're driving at the moment is coordination between the groups. So we're not unnecessarily duplicating, we're not fragmenting, that we are really best addressing what is that local issue, 
what's the research question, the development question, the extension question, and make sure they're linked into it, as well as the broader uh, industry that may not be a member of that group. Peter, in all likelihood, this is the last time Groundcover TV will be speaking to you before you finish up your term as Managing Director. What can you tell us is, A, the highlight of your time, and B, the greatest challenge for your successor? I guess the highlight is that we do really have, in GRDC now, a very clearly defined strategy on where, where we want to go. Uh, we have clearly defined lines of businesses in terms of varieties, farming practices, etc. We have been able to play a key role in facilitating a lot of change, particularly in the whole area of wheat breeding, where we now have commercial wheat breeding, we have overseas companies investing. That's great. The, the biggest challenge going forward is really managing our stakeholders and understanding what the industry needs to develop from a grower's point of view and from a, a government point of view, and to be able to coordinate that and passionately lead it because you really are in this game where you're funding partners, you're not doing the research yourself, you've got multiple stakeholders, all who have different drivers. Somehow the glue in GRDC is to bring all that together, really focus on it, passionately believe in the outcomes of research, development, extension, and drive it and bring the stakeholders along, in the be along with you in the best way you can. How are you feeling about what you've achieved? I've loved my time at GRDC. I think, uh, we, as I've said, we've, we've brought about major change. We know a strategy. We clearly know where we're going. So with that, I leave it very uh, uh, well satisfied. I guess my frustration is that you can never quite get done what you want to get done because of all those complexities and different stakeholders. Um, I, I a great believe in research, development, extension. That's why I took the role at GRDC. I believe in the future that research and development extension will be absolutely critical to the success of not only the grains industry but globally and I think we are very well positioned in Australia with the unique situation of GRDC where you've got industry and government money being invested together. The whole hope is, I believe, is that we do it, we do it well and everyone appreciates the tremendous efforts that are going on between government and industry in addressing our research development extension needs. Peter Redding, thanks for joining us, probably for the last time, on Ground Cover TV. Thank you very much.